questions and answers for a world in crisis. Doubt. We are witness today to a world in chaos. The earth being ravaged and despoiled by greed. Wars and violent ideologies seeking to overpower, control, and enslave through extreme brutality our species. Mankind is at an evolutionary crossroads and is seeking answers to the most pressing questions of our age. Will humanity survive? Will Earth perish in some nuclear holocaust? Is there still hope for peace and collective harmony? We continue our series addressing questions and offering answers from the writings of Sri Aramindo and Mother in this time of planetary crisis, responding especially to the difficulties now facing our youth and invite your questions on all subjects. Students and young adults have sent me their questions on topics that are relevant to them in the world today. But the answers given by Mother and Sri Aurobindo are applicable to all who seek for a greater life, a life more harmonious and an inner truth of one's being. Links are supplied for further study. Primarily, our website, Mother and Sri Aurobindo in. You may also write to us at narada12 at gmail.com. That is N A R A D A, the number 12, at gmail.com. Here are some words of the mother on doubt. One of the chief functions of the physical mind is to doubt. If you listen to it, it will always find a thousand reasons for doubting. But you must know that the physical mind is working in ignorance and full of falsehoods. It is only love that can understand and get at the secrets of the divine working. The mind, the physical mind especially, is incapable of seeing correctly, and yet it always wants to judge. It is only a true, sincere humility in the mind, allowing the psychic to rule the being, that can save human beings from ignorance and obscurity. You must be attentive, silent, must await the inner inspiration, not do anything from external reactions. You must be moved by the light that comes from above, constantly, regularly, must act only under the inspiration of that light and nothing else. Never to think, never to question, never to ask, should I do this or that? But to know, to see, to hear. To act with an inner certitude, without questioning and without doubting, because the decision does not come from you, it comes from above. Sri Aurobindo wrote extensively on doubt. And we quote some of his letters to disciples, 
to help us rid ourselves of doubt once and for all. Quote, As to doubts and argumentative answers to them, I have long given up the practice, as I found it perfectly useless. Yoga is not a field for intellectual argument or dissertation. It is not by the exercise of the logical or debating mind that one can arrive at a true understanding of yoga or follow it. A doubting spirit, quote, honest doubt, and the claim that the intellect shall be satisfied and be made the judge on every point is all very well in the field of mental action outside. But yoga is not a mental field. The consciousness which has to be established is not a mental, logical, or debating consciousness. It is even laid down by yoga that unless and until the mind is stilled, including the intellectual or logical mind, and opens itself in quietude or silence to a higher and deeper consciousness, vision, and knowledge, sadhana cannot reach its goal. For the same reason, an unquestioning openness to the guru is demanded in the Indian spiritual tradition. As for blame, criticism, and attack on the guru, it was considered reprehensible and the surest possible obstacle to sadhana. And again he writes, if the spirit of doubt could be overcome by meeting it with arguments, there might be something in the demand for its removal by satisfaction through logic. But the spirit of doubt doubts for its own sake, for the sake of doubt. It simply uses the mind as its instrument for its particular dharma. And this, not the least, when that mind thinks it is seeking sincerely for a solution of its honest and irrepressible doubts. Mental positions always differ. Moreover, and it is well known that people can argue forever without one convincing the other. To go on perpetually answering persistent and always recurring doubts, such as for long have filled this ashram and obstructed the sadhana, is merely to frustrate the aim of the yoga and go against its central principle with no spiritual or other gain whatever. If anybody gets over his fundamental doubts, it is by the growth of the psychic in him or by an enlargement of his consciousness, not otherwise. Questions which arise from the spirit of enquiry, not aggressive, or self-assertive, but as a part of a hunger for knowledge, can be answered. But the spirit of doubt is insatiable and unappeasable. 
Again, we have this quote from Sri Aurobindo, which shows us, as we have seen again and again, his divine humor. I have started writing about doubt, but even in doing so, I am afflicted by the doubt whether any amount of writing or of anything else can ever persuade the eternal doubt in man, which is the penalty of his native ignorance. In the first place, to write adequately would mean anything from 60 to 600 pages. But not even 6,000 convincing pages would convince doubt, for doubt exists for its own sake. Its very function is to doubt always, and even when convinced, to go on doubting still. It is only to persuade its entertainer to give it board and lodging that it pretends to be an honest truth seeker. This is a lesson I have learned from the experience both of my own mind and of the minds of others. The only way to get rid of doubt is to take discrimination as one's detector of truth and falsehood and under its guard to open the door freely and courageously to experience. Again, Sri Aurobindo answers, is the divine something less than mind or is it something greater? Is mental consciousness with its groping inquiry, endless argument, unquenchable doubt, stiff and unplastic logic, something superior or even equal to the divine consciousness? Or is it something inferior in its action and status? If it is greater, then there is no reason to seek after the divine. If it is equal, then spiritual experience is quite superfluous. But if it is inferior, how can it challenge, judge, make the divine stand as an accused or witness before its tribunal, summon it to appear as a candidate for admission before a board of examiners, or pin it like an insect under its examining microscope? Another reply from Sri Aurobindo. The question is whether that can best be done by the negative and destructive method of doubt, which often kills falsehood, but rejects truth, too, with the same impartial blow, or a more positive, helpful, and luminously searching power can be found, which is not compelled by its inherent ignorance to meet truth and falsehood alike with the stiletto of doubt and the bludgeon of denial. Again, he writes, one thing, however, I make a distinction between doubt and discrimination. If doubt meant a discriminant questioning as to what might be the truth of this or that matter, it would be a part of discrimination and quite admissible. But what is usually meant now by doubt is a negation, positive and peremptory, which does not stop to investigate to consider in the light, to try, to inquire, but says at once, oh no, I am never going to take that as possibly true. That kind of doubt 
may be very useful in ordinary life. It may be practically useful in battering down established things or established ideas or in certain kinds of external controversy to undermine a position that is too dogmatically positive. But I do not think it is of any positive use in matters even of intellectual inquiry. There is nothing it can do there that impartial discrimination cannot do better. In spiritual matters, discrimination has a huge place. But negating doubt simply stops the path of truth with its placard, no entry, or its dogmatic, this far and no farther. Again he writes, the faith in spiritual things that is asked of the sadhak is not an ignorant but a luminous faith a faith in light and not in darkness. It is called blind by the skeptical intellect because it refuses to be guided by outer appearances or seeming facts. For it looks to the truth behind and does not walk on the crutches of proof and evidence. It is an intuition, an intuition not only waiting for experience to justify it, but leading towards experience. If I believe in self-healing, I shall, after a time, find out the way to heal myself. If I have faith in transformation, I can end by laying my hand on and unraveling the whole process of transformation. But if I begin with doubt and go on with more doubt, how far am I likely to go on the journey? Mental faith combats doubt and helps to open to the true knowledge. Vital faith prevents the attacks of the hostile forces or defeats them and helps to open to the true spiritual will and action. Physical faith keeps one firm through all physical obscurity, inertia, or suffering and helps to open the foundation of the true consciousness. Psychic faith opens to the direct touch of the divine and helps to bring union and surrender. If you desire only the divine, there is an absolute certitude that you will reach the divine. But all these questionings and repinings at each movement only delay and keep an impending curtain before the heart and the eyes. For at every step, when one makes an advance, the opposite forces will throw these doubts like a rope between the legs and stop one short with a stumble. It is their metier to do that. One must say, since I want only the divine, my success is sure. I have only to walk forward in all confidence, and his own hand will be there, secretly leading me to him, by his own way, and at his own time. That is what you must keep as your constant mantra. 
anything else one may doubt, but that he who desires only the divine shall reach the divine is a certitude and more certain than two and two make four. This is the faith every sadak must have at the bottom of his heart, supporting him through every stumble and blow and ordeal. It is only false ideas still casting their shadows on your mind that prevent you from having it. Push them aside and the back of the difficulty will be broken. Sri Aurobindo.